What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you like gear reviews, vlogs, and guns, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you missed my last video, go ahead and check it out right here. Today I want to give my impressions and overall thoughts on the Chris Vector CRB rifle chambered in 45 ACP. But before I do, I wanted to inform you all of how I received this gun for this review video. Impact Guns, based out of Ogden, Utah, has accepted me into their TNE program. What that means is they allow me to take home guns that they provide from their store and they allow me to review them and give feedback to you guys. I will leave all of their social media in the description below, so be sure to check them out. Now, onto the review. I have always had a fascination with these guns because of their unique design that makes them look somewhat like they should be in a movie like Starship Troopers. The Vector is definitely a firearm a lot of people would love to fire because of its style and versatility. The barrel itself is made of 4140 chrome molly with a black nitride finish. The Vector is definitely a firearm a lot of people would love to fire because of its style and versatility. There's definitely a cool factor to owning this gun. You'll notice that on the end of the CRB, you'll get this long muzzle device that makes this firearm 47 state compliant. The overall barrel length is 16 inches. And the overall length of the rifle collapsed is 35.25 inches long. And the extended length of the rifle is 38.25 inches. And the weight of the gun is actually not too heavy. It's an eight pound rifle, but that is unloaded and that is without an extended mag. So just keep that in mind that it's not super heavy, but it can be very taxing when you are holding it for a very long time. The main things that makes this gun unique is their recoil system. And it's their proprietary Super V recoil mitigation system. The system functions unlike traditional rifles and pistols because it actually directs the force downward in this mechanism here as opposed to back into the stock like um, let's say an AR-15. As you can see in this clip there's very little muzzle rise which allows me to reacquire my target easily after every shot. This should go without saying, but the recoil system is all contained in this area of the firearm here. And so that contributes to the weird shape to the gun. The trigger on the rifle is a pivoting single stage trigger with a pull weight of around six to seven pounds. Let me show you the pull weight. So here I have a Wheeler trigger pull scale here. Um, it ranges anywhere from one to eight pounds. Um, it's kind of analog, it's not, not digital or anything like that. Um, but I'm gonna use this to test the trigger weight of the actual gun. So I'm gonna actually put my finger here so that it won't slide up and down the trigger and so I can actually get a good read on the scale here. So I'm actually not helping the trigger, I'm not pushing the trigger with my fingers, I'm just holding this little hook here so that it doesn't slide off the trigger when I'm pulling it. So here we go. So as you can see, that trigger is around six and a half pounds. And I've seen it range anywhere from, you know, like six pounds to, to seven there. But from the looks of it, it's about six and a half. But let's try it again. I think from what I can see here, the trend is, it just depends on where this falls on the trigger. But like I said, typically it runs anywhere from, anywhere from six to seven pounds. I think this is kind of a trigger that you'd actually expect this type of gun to have. You'll also notice that the Vector has a non-reciprocating charging handle that sits between the lower receiver and the upper receiver. So as you can see, it kind of flips out like this, and then you charge it back like that. And the charging handle, as you pull back, is nice because when you, after you pull it, it folds flush, or I shouldn't say flush, but it folds back onto the upper receiver there. I just feel that this charging handle is actually really nice because it actually just feels natural to be able to pull down this way, especially when you have the gun presented, that you have that charging handle right here and you just come down, put your hand ready to fire. As you can see here is the bolt release. So to engage or to load a, a round into the chamber, you just go ahead and press this portion of it right here as opposed to here, the part that's kind of flipped up. Just press that. And there you go, you got a round in the chamber. Not really, but that's how you would load it. So the way that I wanted to hold it was dropping the bolt was right here. That's just what felt most natural to me. However, if you can see right where I was holding it is right where that, so that when that would force itself open, 
my hand would be right there. Now that's just what felt most comfortable to me. Um, you know, I'm sure if you had like a, a vertical grip or something here to be able to hold it there, that, you know, this problem would go away entirely. But if you're just using it like this and holding it, that bolt stop when it comes open, man, freaking A. The safety selector is actually ambidextrous. You'll get the same thing on both sides. Um, so you've got safe here. And then you've got fire. Kind of a nice safety selector there if you ask me. I mean, it's just really easy to engage if you need to. As you have the gun presented, um, it's really easy to engage with your left hand or your right hand. Um, that's opposite if you're ob obviously left-handed. But I actually really like this. It's uh, very ergonomic and easy to engage and disengage. You'll notice here as well that the mag release is nice and large. Um, it isn't ambidextrous. You don't get the same thing on the other side. You just kind of get the, uh, the, pr the imprint of the, that there is a mag release in this area of the gun, but it's only on the left side of the gun here. Um, and I found that the mag release itself was a little odd. When I'd be shooting the gun, I would find myself pressing on that mag release and I would think it was a ma malfunction because I didn't know what I was pressing or that I was gripping too hard when I was shooting. Um, and it would release the mag ever so slightly, as you can see there. And I, I kept having to, it didn't fall out, and so I kept having to do this. Um, and then, you know, recharge the handle. And so that got kind of frustrating. So I think the uh, overall placement of the mag release is a little odd. I think if they can maybe do a redesign of that mechanism, maybe put it higher or maybe a little bit lower, um, I could see how lefties might be able to benefit from that. So if I'm a lefty and I'm holding the gun like this, I can literally just use my index finger to push that button there and yeah, it's, it works because I can actually curl my finger over that. As you can see here, I can curl it over or just avoid it altogether. Um, on this side, it's a little harder because my whole hand is covering that mag release. And so when you're bracing the gun, bracing that little bit of a recoil that it has, you basically find yourself accidentally hitting that if it's your first time shooting the gun. After a while, I did get used to it, but I'd say that's one of the biggest cons of this gun is, is just that placement of the mag release. Additionally, I really like the grip on the gun because it has a 15 degree angle. That just feels natural because it's a just a good feel for, for a pistol. I mean, that's this kind of the same grip angle as maybe a Glock or, or SIG, you know, something like that. Uh, a lot of people install a 15 degree grip onto their AR-15. So I personally like this, um, it's comfortable. I think it's a great addition to, to the gun. I think if it would have been any further out, I think that would, would have been really uncomfortable for, you know, how much of a mid-weight gun this actually is. One of the cool features about the gun that I really appreciate and you find a lot of manufacturers doing the same thing is the mags that it takes are actually Glock factory mags um, right there. I don't know if you can see that but yeah it's just a Glock Glock mag there. It's obviously a mag made for 45 ACP rounds but as you change these lower receivers which I'll talk about in a second um, you'll obviously change those out for nine millimeter mags, 40, 10 millimeter, whatever. But yeah, it's just super convenient because that is good for a lot of you Glock owners out there. Um, you don't actually have to buy super different mags, um, you know, and, and they're, they're not proprietary to Chris. So these are specifically Glock mags. They're affordable. Um, they're readily available in most stores. And I think that was a nice touch on Chris's part. Good job, Chris. Now that I'm talking about magazines, it's important to mention that on Chris's website, you actually can find their mag extension kits that will turn a regular Glock mag into an extended mag. The magazines that you can find on 
Chris's website, or rather the kits that you can find on their website, basically just allow you to take factory Glock mags and put an extension. They have like a little shroud that you can put on it to, to extend it further. And for the 45 ACP magazines, it actually extends it out to 30 rounds. So that's pretty neat. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can find aftermarket ETS mags or Lancer mags or something like that out there that'll definitely have that without having to do um, you know, a retrofit on, on all of these. So um, it's, it's your choice. You can either buy the extended mags already made or you can just do it yourself for your existing mags. This particular model of Chris Vector is equipped with the Defiance brand furniture. I know on the stock here you have the six point um, stock and it's fairly comfortable. Um, also what's Defiance is the the sights. Um, so you've got those sights on there that are actually not Magpul. Um, and, but you could definitely put, you know, some Emba sights on here as well. Um, but this is just what the, the gun comes with. One of the, a few of the things that I really like about this stock is the fact that it has this rubberized portion on the back that makes it comfortable. You can definitely replace it. I'm sure Defiance has some sort of replacement pad that you could put on here if you don't really like this rubber. The, the stock itself has six points of retractability, which is really nice, especially if you're, you know, maybe have a shorter reach or a longer reach. Um, but I, I really do like um, this stock a lot. Another thing that I really like is the fact that it has a QD swivel mount here. Um, you could either attach a single point sling or a dual point. And I should mention that the one piece of non-factory furniture, accessories, whatever, that I put on this gun is this Magpul QD Picatinny mount. That's because the only sling that I have is a Roan Industries dual point sling. And so I'm able to connect up down here, but also up here. Another item on this uh, area of the gun that I should mention is the fact that this gun has um, these two holes on both sides of the gun. Um, you can see them here. And as I flip it around this way, right here. Yeah, if you want extra rail sections, either for maybe to mount a light or or whatever, um, you can you can ac actually add them right there. The rifle itself actually comes with about I'd say maybe 13 to 15 inches of rail on the top here, and it's really nice because it has room for the sights, as you can see here. But also, I was able to mount my Hollow Sun HS. 510c and it was honestly super nice because this this gun shoots pretty true anyways with the irons but with that red dot it pushed it right over the edge of just being an excellent shooter and just like any other rifle out there you really get a, a good sense of modularity with this uh, with this gun um, as you can see here like I've, I've mentioned before right here and you just remove all of these pins here um, to remove this lower from the actual upper receiver up here. This is all that part. So you can see the, the split right here. Um, and that allows you to change the gun from a, you know, you can change the calibers, you can change the color. Um, it's pretty awesome. And I think it's a really good way of just, you know, having a very versatile gun if you have multiple calibers. And speaking of colors, so the Vector comes in a few different colors. Yeah, it also comes in black, FDE, OD green, and sniper gray. So I personally like the sniper gray, and a good friend of mine, um, Kevin from Black Briar Media, he actually has a really nice Vector that I will share a picture of here. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, you can definitely get these Cerakoted uh, if you don't like any of those colors, or if you want you know, some sort of camo design, I'm sure there's a way to, to get all of this changed. But um, out of the box, it's really those uh, few colors that they offer. I really like the Chris Vector. Um, I like it because it's definitely a showstopper. It's one that you can take to the range and it's always gonna turn heads. Um, you pull, especially this Alpine White, it, it definitely stands out among all of the black guns that you may have. I just, I feel that um, if you're gonna own this gun, you definitely need to get the accessories for it. 
Um, that's that's one of the biggest things that I recommend and I hope that you do when you when you purchase this gun. Concerning the price at fifteen hundred dollars or fourteen ninety nine ninety nine um, on on their website, you may find it cheaper or more expensive elsewhere. Um, it's really a good gun out of the box. Like I said, it's it's one of those ones that you can have in your safe and be confident that it's going to actually fire when you need it to. But personally, if it were up to me, I actually wouldn't get the CRB version. I would actually get the version where it's the barrel only comes to about here, and then maybe I'd get you know a suppressor on here. Also, a folding stock would be really nice. I mean, it, it has all the same you know parts, you know castle nut and buffer tube, as any other gun. There's no buffer spring, and so you could easily replace this with a folding stock. It would also make for a very good home defense weapon. Um, I think that the modularity of this is just like any other rifle. Like I said, just put that folding stock and maybe a suppressor on here and you're golden. Overall, I, I think I, I will give my stamp of approval, whatever that may mean to you. Um, but I actually really like this gun. It, it was a blast to shoot. And aside from the small cons, you know, like that, like the mag button I was telling you about, the mag release button there, um, and a couple other small things, I, th I really think this is a solid firearm uh, for the money. And I think you get what you pay for, and I think it's it's really good out of the box. Um, you really don't have to do a whole lot to it, except maybe buy some accessories. But I guess that's the easy part, right? If you own the Chris Vector, what do you think of it? Um, do you like it, dislike it? Uh, obviously you own it, so um, you may have liked it at one point. Um, let me know down in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear all of your thoughts and opinions. What uh, kind of modifications do you want to add to your Vector or what should be added to this? I hope you liked this review. I hope it was helpful in some way. Um, if you did like it, go ahead and hit that like button down below. That's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.